Hi, it's Richard Mosdell. This is my daily karate vlog number 36. Can't believe uh, racking up the numbers. What I want to do today is talk to you about karate authenticity. This is important if you are a karate instructor, if you're a karate student, and you're a karate administrator. You're someone who has to put that stuff together, and every karate student at some point will end up being some sort of administrator or instructor, whether you're teaching somebody in a class, helping out your instructor, or hey, one day you get to be part of organizing an event. So I'm going to flip this over to the whiteboard, and let's go through karate authenticity. Karate authenticity. So what does it mean to be authentic? There used to be a different way of thinking about this. You would think about a karate lineage chart. So this was the original number one master. And they would teach a bunch of people. That person would then teach a whole bunch more people. That person would end up teaching a whole bunch more people. And somewhere down the way, maybe at the seventh generation, okay, your instructor was taught. So this was really important before because there are different styles and over time, over the you know, decades and decades, by the time it got to your instructor, how this style and how this tree maybe fit in with this other master over here. And this person taught their students who taught their students who again taught their students, right? And they got down to maybe a sixth generation. This at some point, when there was different styles mixing in, would be considered mainstream karate. So there was a sense of being legitimate. So when your instructor was talking to you, they would claim they were learning the correct knowledge coming down. Because some people thought that some people were using the karate name incorrectly. But authenticity is a little bit different. Authenticity is, are you presenting something that's your true self. You know, for example, when someone comes into the club, okay, and they're looking, there's a, my eyes here, and they're looking at ABC Karate Club, they are less concerned if you have the six degree black belt, six down. They're less concerned if you won a world championship. These are things about you. They're less concerned if you have, you know, the perfect lineage. What are they concerned about? Does their child smile when you teach the class? This is really important. What are they concerned about? There's a value that you're giving them. They can see a value. For example, in our club, we have a national coach. We also have myself, who spent, you know, let's say 10 years in Japan. This is all second to the fact that we are one, close to someone's house. And two, we're trying to provide value to the students. And I've seen, from here, I've seen brown belts. We all have. We've seen first degree black belts. Be incredible instructors, far beyond what someone says they are when they're a sixth, seventh degree belt, black belt, because they're just making us focus on that belt and not what they can do, provide the value to the students. This is what I think all the time. That's why in our club, we don't ask you for money for the whole year. We want you to come month by month and grow with us as we grow. But there is one other thing about being authentic. If you are claiming to be AZ karate style, And you're using the logo and the name. And you've inherited it. 
from somebody else. One thing you have to be careful of is inside the mainstream karate world is that name and that logo how it's actually perceived as authentic? Or have you inherited a problem from somebody else? This is important for karate instructors to think about where they're at and also for karate students as they think about where they're going to go. It's almost better to have a name, for example, Ricky's Karate Club. Let's spell Ricky like this. Ricky's Karate Club. And have your own logo because then you can be your authentic self. Then how you decide to add your style is second to who you are. Uh, I don't go by Ricky, but I'm just using that name. So it's something to think about to avoid a problem where you've inherited something that may not in the mainstream karate actually be looked at the way that you think it is and where you can be more your authentic self. Because when soccer mom and soccer dad come in to the club and they want to talk to you, this is what they're going to be looking at. What type of value do you bring? That's it. That's my karate thought for this week. Uh, and tomorrow, when we have this place full of karate students, we're going to do something else. I hope you also caught the Canada Open Flying Sidekick Contest explanation video over on the Canada Open Karate Championship Facebook page. So check it out. It's a great competition. You'll have a lot of fun. Um, we used to do it for the Vancouver Karate Cup years and years ago. And the Flying Sidekick competition um, just ended up being even more popular than Kata and Kumite because everybody wanted to go over there. Even the elite athletes like, wow, that's pretty fun. I want the bragging rights, right? I'm Richard Mazdal. Thanks a lot for watching my karate vlog and talk to you tomorrow.